What's going on everyone? Juicebags here and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. Now today I wanted to take a quick look at the Squire and more particularly the Cannonballs. Now Cannonballs, the cannons obviously need some love. I mean there's no doubt about that in each form. In its, in its regular form and in its heavy cannonball form. They need a little love. They put out some nice DPS. They have uh, a pretty decent attack rate on the regular cannonballs. And they have the benefit of comboing nicely with the freeze for the shatter combo. Which uh, gives you quite a few insta-kills out there. Now, every Squire Builder I see of late is all about the harps. And the harps just got some love and obviously they needed it. And, um, you know, I'm using them too. However, I wanted to get back into the Cannonball Squire and uh, show it a little love and possibly do a little Nightmare 4 incursion build here. First off, let's take a look at them. Now, the first things you want to look at with your Cannonball Squire is going to be, obviously, your defense crit, your defense power, and then the attack speed. So, when you're specking in to your Squire, you're going to want to go ahead and max out the defense power. As with all your builders, you're going to max your attack speed and the range. Your 30 left over is going to go right into crit damage. Now, uh, the cap, of course, as everybody knows, is 30% crit chance. I'm at 29%, so still fine-tuned in this set of gear. Uh, I've got some improvements that still need to be made. Now, when you're looking through your gear, obviously, you're going to want iron core on all your pieces. However, on your weapon, you're going to want to get shell shock. Now, as you see here, I've got a shell shock uh, impaling cutter that has a 24.3% chance on hit to stun for two seconds. This is actually the highest one that I have seen so far. I'm assuming it probably goes up to 25%, but 24.3 is the best I've come across to this point. Now, of course, uh, you're going to want defense power on your weapon. In every other piece, you're going to want defense power, defense crit. Now, I did throw uh, one defense health piece in the mix, although it's probably not needed at all, as ideally my uh, cannonball towers are not going to take any damage. However, I do have this one piece that uh, does have the defense health, and then just defense power, defense crit on everything else. Still got some upgrades to do. Now, on those passives, um, we talked about iron core. That's a must. Uh, that's going to roll up to 3%, and you're going to want that on every single piece. Now, it's not going to roll on the shield. Um, in fact, you're going to have a hard time finding a shield that seems like it's worth anything at all. However, all your other pieces, you're going to want iron core. Now, on that same note, on all of your other pieces, you're going to want vector corrector. Uh, increases projectile tower range by 3%. This is a must as well. Um, just do it. Get the range. It's for you. Now, uh, on your medallion, same thing. Vector corrector, iron core, and defense crit chance. But make sure you go with a defense crit damage medallion, not a defense crit health or a defense health medallion. Anyway, let's hop on into a run and take a look at it. Now, uh, before I jump into that, I wanted to take one second and talk about the heavy cannonball sphere. Now, remember the Heavy Cannonball Sphere is going to do more damage the farther you are away from the target. So, uh, as we look right here, let it run for a second. Well, I'm assuming we're probably going to be at about 20 to 26,000 DPS. See, 20,710 on the low end, and it looks like I'm going up as high as like 26,8 on the high end. So 26.8 on the high end. Now if we take that same tower and we move it back a little bit and give it a little bit of range. We're going to see that that number is actually going to go up. The farther the cannonball balls are away, the harder they do hit. So uh, you want to make sure you, you maximize this massive range. Now when you do have full vector corrector, uh, like I do, the cannonballs are actually going to explode before they get to the end of the range, which will will get moderately irritating, but nothing to be overly concerned about at all. Uh, the packs, of course, are going to be coming towards you, 
so it's nice to get that ball rolling by the time they get down into range of it before it explodes it's going to hit for some nice damage now i'm going to go ahead and build out life root on incursion mode as that's kind of the go-to map for comparisons these days and i wanted to stick with the same one just so everyone had a little bit of a reference point so let's head on into nightmare 4 forest poachers and take a look at it I really love the cannons. Um, now, obviously, anyone that was a fan of the original game and a fan of the Squire, they're, they're loving their harpoons. There's no doubt about it. I'm the same way. I was a massive, massive fan of the harps in DD1, and I'm using them pretty frequently in DD2 here now as well. So, let's go ahead and get a little love out of the box, and then we'll get things set up. Now, this particular map, of course, we've only got these two lanes where we have a long straight shot for the heavy cannonballs. This lane over here has got way too many twists and turns, so I'm not going to use any heavy cannonballs on that lane at all. But uh, we're going to start off and use some target dummies to blockade everything up. I'm going to go one right there. This one I'm actually going to move around a little bit further up compared to where I normally do. And then same thing here, this one's actually going to come a little bit back from where I normally do. Now I want it uh, right about at the front of that board right there. The board on the ground. That's a uh, pretty good place to pop it down. Gives you a little room to build back here without worrying about any ogre stops hitting the royal eggs. As we don't want no ogres hitting the royal eggs. Now I am going to bring along some Serenity Aura as well as... Anyone who says Serenity is not probably the most impactful current defense in the game is just ridiculous. Use it on every map. I do. Everyone I play with does. And it just seems like kind of a no-brainer. Serenity is very, very powerful when combined with the Purge Evil weapon. Alright, gonna get our Serenities up there and then switch right back over to the Squire. Now, like I said, this lane is not going to have any heavies, so let me just go ahead and get the, the regular cannonballs knocked out first. I'm going to go as far over to this corner as I can and pop one right up on the rail. Uh, the reason I want to press it over far is you can actually fit two of them along that section of the rail before the tree if you put that first cannon all the way over. Now, that should allow you to fit four of them on the rail here pretty comfortably. And then, I'm going to jump up here to place down two more. If I uh, if I don't fail jump the whole time, we'll see here. Now, same thing here. I'm going to go all the way out to the ledge as far as I can. And then the next one is close to it, right behind it. And we are good to go for that lane. Now, let's go ahead and head over to this side. I'm going to uh, tuck these guys up in here a little bit as they will shoot through that opening there in that gap and let's go hmm why don't we go with five of them over here i think that'd be a good start and then for the center lane of course which is actually going to be taking two lanes of traffic since we're going to ignore uh poor quab he doesn't deserve the abuse but oh he's getting it again and I'm going to put three on this side. And then two right here on this side. Now, I am elevating those up as I don't want to risk any uh, potential ogre stomp issues. And then now it's time to switch back over to the heavies. Now, we've got a couple of pretty decent opportunities to put these down. First off, obviously, in the center, we've got a massive straightaway right here. So I'm going to go back to the egg as far as I can. Put one right in the middle. Going to aim it right up the center. And then I'm going to put one on either side of it, aiming directly towards the center as well. Now, uh, the heavy cannonballs, are they react wildly different with terrain. Um, some areas, or areas that are smooth, like, say, this railing, they will just roll right over the top of. 
However, you'll see the smallest little thing on the ground somewhere or a little piece of landscape that you would never guess it and the cannonballs will actually stop and explode right there. So you have to be real careful with your placement there. Here again, we're going to go ahead, or you know what, I'm going to put one directly behind there, pointed right up the center. And then we're going to go two right behind it. So that gives us uh, quite the impact here. We got five regulars and three heavies here. We got five regulars and three heavies in the middle. And then six regular cannonball towers over on this side. Now I've got, what, 200, 310, or 320, pardon me, DU left. And that's going to allow me to lay down some nice proton beams for some CC and a little additional AOE DPS. Now it's important, as we want to get those shatter combos, we want to make sure we're not placing the um, protons too far out of the range of our cannonballs. So by holding down shift, of course, we see our range, and we see that is right, like here at this stick is going to be the furthest out we want these to go so I'm going to go ahead and come back a little inside and just completely cover this lane with a uh, I think we'll use a, a full 11 DU proton right here on this side and that looks pretty good right there I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side however I'm only going to use a 90. And let's see, where does our range stop there? there here we're going to go all the way up to the current turn there. And that really is kind of the perfect spot to put the protons anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and hug the corner here pretty tight. As they do, uh, some of the mobs will come around that corner very quickly. And we're going to go with a 90 DU proton right there. Now, um, as it looks, the lane swings way, way out around the Proton. However, most of the mobs are going to come right through that path. And then that is going to lead me... Oh, actually, I needed a 100 DU Proton there, didn't I? Let me go ahead and get rid of that bad boy. <clears throat> Pardon me. And let's get that 100 DU Proton spread out the same way, hugging the curve. Almost uh, didn't take advantage of 10 DU there. And that's going to leave me enough DU for 100, pro, um, 100 DU proton here as well. Now here it's a little tricky as you can't lay it down right here in the center while Quab is there. If you wait until Quab is destroyed, then of course you can. However, I'm not patient enough for that. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw it down here. And just kind of min-max the uh, the angles a little bit to try to make sure uh, Quab is not going to become too much of an irritation over the whole thing. And there we go, 100 DU Proton right in the middle. Now your Proton Beams, my Proton Beams anyway are 100% defense crit. I've got no defense health on them. So they are going to take, uh, take a beating. They're going to need constant upgrades. Now, they're not going to burn all the way down, however, if you upgrade them every wave, you, you won't have a problem. Uh, you shouldn't have to worry about any mid-wave type repairs. Anyway, I am going to hop on old Juicy here, just to try to keep this uh, a little bit more vanilla. Or the Juicer, pardon me. Losing track of all the Juice names. Oh, before I forget, on that side note, I finally found a damn... 50% chilling touch and it's got defense crit on it. How wrong is that? That is just oh, I was so excited when I saw it. I saw 50% 5% crit and then I look up and I see defense crit damage. Ugh, so irritating whole nother story altogether Anyway, let's go ahead and get this wave started after this first wave I am gonna jump all the way to the end to um, Keep this video from being 40 minutes long or whatever Come on up, baddies. Now, um, obviously with the turtle build here, you got quite a wait until they get to you. See those bowling balls, or cannonballs are rolling just right over all this here. And then I think they were exploding before they actually got to the bads. 
but we got a nice uh, nice bit of damage being done up front here. Now, although the cannons do target flyers, any of these cannon builds, you're definitely going to want to uh, to give a little assist with the flyers. Flyers are flyers were uh, quite the nuisance in the game, really up until the Abyss Lord. Once the Abyss Lord came in, flyers became kind of a non-issue. Frosties help out quite a bit with them, but nothing does quite as good as just getting up in there and wrecking them yourself. Now with the protons, of course, we have the benefit of any of the cobalt flyers are going to dive bomb into those, and that's that's really going to kind of save us here. We don't have to worry about any of those guys pushing up. Doesn't seem like we're having to worry about them too much anyway, huh? Oh yeah, the roly poly cannonballs. They still got uh, got some work to do. Not only on just that tower in general. I hope it doesn't get removed. But I gotta, I don't know. I I think it may end up getting removed. Now hopefully it doesn't. But besides just the effectiveness of the cannonballs, the graphic on it is one of the worst in the game, in my opinion. It, as far as the uh, the launch graphic of any sort of defense. That needs serious work, and it's a far cry from the original, the original bowling balls in in DD1. That's for darn sure. I was actually hoping when I first that was the first uh, Uber I bought way back when, and uh, no, I hadn't seen anyone use it. There was no videos or anything up anywhere, and uh, I really was hoping that turned it into the DD1 flavor cannons. However, it did not. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, jump right on through at super speed all the way up to the last wave. Uh, we'll throw some ups around here. Like I said, uh, you will want to up, up your protons every wave. Um, I don't usually take them all the way up, but I will throw two or three upgrades on them. And uh, then, of course, this build is all about the cannons, so... Every single cannon should get some love uh, right out of the gates from the very first wave. Gonna get that going here. And then we're gonna go ahead and super speed it all the way to the end and take a look at that last wave as well. Here goes.
All right, we're back here with just under 100 mobs left, and as you see, it's pretty much good game. Um, I'm trying to give a little assist on these flyers all the way through to the end here, as I don't want just one lone flyer coming through and ruining my day. That's always a possibility with, uh, with the cannons. Now remember, too, that uh, with a buff beam and or a boost aura, you can make these cannons hit just insanely hard. And if you get your heavy cannonballs out to maximum range and they're boosted and buffed, holy shiz, it just goes crazy from there. So uh, another successful Nightmare 4 incursion run, this one using the Squire in those cannonballs. Loving it. Now let's see what kind of hotness we get in the box. If we can manage to skip this ungodly irritating cutscene. They at least turned the volume down on it. It's not deafening anymore. Come on, give me a 50%. 50% frosty in the box. That is not a 50% frosty. Anyway, that's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching. Click that like button. Please subscribe. Let me know what uh, kind of challenges or hero spotlights you want to see. Um, I felt that the, the cannons have kind of gone neglected a little bit and wanted to show them some love. And there you go. Thanks again. We'll see you.